Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I want to talk about what wonderful people you are, my viewers. I'm just amazed by the way that we get along and the, the love of music and the love of artistry and how everyone enjoys what's going on with these songs. And, and patronizes the artists that they love. And I'm so impressed by that. I just wanted to let you know. I have a few items for the news today. The first one is a Tucker Carlson interview with a man named Jesse Kelly. I'm not going to play it, but I'll put the link in the description. And you're welcome to watch it if you want. Jesse Kelly is an unapologetic uh, Texan. Some would call him conservative. I think he's, I think conservative doesn't really um, fit him. I, I don't think it's a label that describes him very well. Uh, I would say he's uh, a radical constitutionalist. There you go. That's what I would call him. Uh, he believes strongly in the U.S. Constitution. He wants to see it honored, and he's very upset with the way things are going. So it's an interesting interview. I thought you might enjoy reading it. It gives you a different point of view than perhaps you normally get. The second article <clears throat> is titled, The Milky Way's Largest Black Hole is Lurking Surprisingly Close to Earth. And I want to read you just a little, little bit of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Scientists from the European Space Agency's Gaia mission have identified a dormant black hole with a mass of 33 solar masses. Now, I don't know what a solar mass is, so I had to go look this up on Wikipedia. A solar mass is a standard unit of mass in astronomy equal to approximately 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. It is approximately equal to the mass of the sun. So let me read that to you again. Scientists from the European Space Agency's Gaia mission have identified a dormant black hole with a mass of 33 solar masses. So this black hole is 33 times bigger than the sun. That's huge. Making it the most massive black hole of stellar origin discovered within our galaxy to date. The discovery, derived from the preliminary data of Gaia's fourth data release, sheds new light on the formation and distribution of black holes in the cosmos. The black hole, named Gaia BH3, is part of a binary system located approximately 500 parsecs from Earth. Well, I don't know what a parsec is, so I had to look that up on Wikipedia. The parsec is a unit of length used to measure the large distances to astronomical objects outside the solar system, approximately equal to 3.26 light years are 206,265 astronomical units. <sighs> okay, so 3.26 light years is a parsec. This thing is 590 parsecs, so that would be a long, long way. Let's see, 590 times 2.65, a 2.65, excuse me, I screwed that up. Hold on a minute. 590 times 2.65 would be 1,563 and a half light years from Earth. It's a long ways away. <laughs> Uh, I'm not an astronomer, I'm not a scientist, so a lot of this stuff is like Greek to me and I have to look it up as you can see. The discovery is significant not only because of the black hole's mass, but also because it challenges existing models of stellar evolution and black hole formation. 
The interesting thing to me is that they say that this black hole is dormant. So uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but I think that it means that we're not threatened by it, which is a nice thing to know. The next article that I have for you, and, and you can read that, it's, it's a fairly lengthy article, very scientific, but you know, some of you might find it interesting. Um, the next article I have is they were assaulted on campus for being Jews. This is a very disturbing phenomenon that's taking place in our country and around the world. This is on the free press and it's written by Barry Weiss. And I just want to read a little bit of it to you. For a second, imagine that black students at Columbia were taunted go back to Africa. Or imagine that a gay student was surrounded by homophobic protesters and hit with a stick at Yale University. Or imagine if a campus imam told Muslim students that they ought to head home for Ramadan because campus public safety could not guarantee their security. There would be relentless fury from our media and condemnation from our politicians. Yes, there would. We all know this. Just remember the righteous and rightful outrage over the white supremacist Unite the Right March in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017, where neo-Nazis chanted, the Jews will not replace us. This weekend at Columbia and Yale, student demonstrators did all of the above, only it was directed at Jews. They told Columbia students to go back to Poland a Jewish woman at Yale was assaulted with a Palestinian flag and an Orthodox rabbi at Columbia told students to go home for their own safety. This is happening in America, but it's happening around the world. And there, there is no excuse for this. There, uh, you know, we fought a world war over this. Millions and millions of people died over this. And yet here we are once again, headed down the same path. Where hatred of someone for who they are or what they are is spurring violence. It's just, it's too much. It needs to stop. Good people honest people need to stand up and speak out and say enough is enough stop this now you have every right to be a protester you have no right whatsoever to harm another person period stop the last article i have and of course i put the links to all these in the description as i say the last article I have is Australian Censorship Commissar orders X to globally remove video of Islamic terror attack on Christian Bishop. Now this, <laughs> this story blows my mind. <clears throat> As some of you may be aware, an Orthodox Christian Bishop was attacked by a knife-wielding Islamist activist in Australia. And <laughs> the video was posted on X and people reacted to the video posted on X. And X was uh, contacted by the Australian government and ordered to remove the video evidence of the anti-Christian attack. While the platform agreed to accommodate the Australian e-safety commissioner re regionally, that apparently was not enough for the Australian state, which has since demanded global censorship of the video. To which ex Elon Musk, who owns X, responded, pound sand. And well, he should. The, the mind-boggling thing to me is we have a video of this attack, but the Australian government wants to hide it from the public. They don't want people to see this. <sighs> what? 
The New South Wales Police Force Commissioner Karen Webb indicated Tuesday, we believe there are elements that are satisfied in terms of religious motivated extremism. After all consideration, uh, after consideration of all the material, I declared that it was a terrorist incident, added Webb. But the Global Government Affairs team revealed that the Australian eSafety Commissioner has ordered X to remove certain posts in Australia that publicly commented on the recent attack against a Christian bishop. These posts did not violate X's rules on violent speech. But the woke commissioner, an American who allegedly turned down a CIA job to work in the U.S. Congress before heading off to work for Microsoft, and now lives in Australia, and is director, and she also worked for at, at Twitter as a director of public policy in Australia before it was bought by Elon Musk. Uh, and she's been celebrated by the World Economic Forum as among the world's most influential leaders, revolutionizing government. She is not personally satisfied that enough was done to protect Australians from this most extreme and gratuitous, vi gratuitous violent material circulating online. Why do Australians need protection? Uh, are we babies? We do not need the government protecting us from seeing the truth. We need to be able to see the truth, and we need to make our own personal decisions about what that truth means to us. <sighs> While convinced uh, eSafety's order was not within the scope of Australian law, X initially complied with the directive, geo-blocking the relevant comment content in Australia pending a legal challenge. However, that was apparently met with a subsequent demand to globally withhold these posts or face a daily fine of 785,000 Australian dollars. A daily fine. <sighs> so, X responded, while X respects the right of a country to enforce its laws within its own jurisdiction, the eSafety Commissioner does not have the authority to dictate what content X users can see globally. Global takedown orders go against the very principles of a free and open internet and threaten free speech everywhere. But, <laughs> the Australian Prime Minister said, by and large, people responded appropriately to the calls by the eSafety Commissioner X chose, X, uh, by the eSafety Commissioner X chose not to. When he says people, he's talking about Facebook, TikTok, the other platforms, Instagram. They apparently all caved in. X chose not to. They stand, I think. I find it extraordinary that X chose not to comply and trying to argue their case. He insinuated that the video evidence of the attack on a Christian cleric amounted to misinformation. A video of an attack is misinformation. Really? We know, I think overwhelmingly, Australians want misinformation and disinformation to stop. This isn't about freedom of expression, said the Prime Minister. This is about the dangerous implications that can occur when things are not simply true. That everyone knows is not true. How, how, can, he, how can these words come out of his mouth? <sighs> and replicated and weaponized in order to cause division, and in this case to promote negative statements, and potentially to just inflame what was a very difficult situation. What? <laughs> this is the craziness of the world that we live in, folks. This is the craziness of it. That true facts are not true. They're misinformation and disinformation. And false facts are true. They're information. That's the world that we live in today. <sighs> yeah. 
You know, it's, it's insulting to an adult to be told this. It really is. And the adults in Australia ought to be telling the government, stop insulting us. Oh, absolutely insane. Well, that's the news for today. And as I always do, I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era vet out.